Hello, hello. So I'm going to wait a couple of minutes just to see if anyone comes on live. It's weird because I can't actually see. Oh, hi, Debbie. I can now. Hey, Debbie. Oh, at least I know I'm talking to somebody. That's really, that's really nice. I hope you're okay. I'm quite excited to start talking with Asia. Uh, this is always a really awkward period when you're waiting for people. Oh, thank you. My Marilyn, this is like a, I got this at a, um, like a secondhand charity shop, pop-up sh charity shop event. And I live in it. I think it was a couple of pounds. And I literally live in it. Although I had a jumper on today and I was so hot with the weather. So I had to change. Da -da. It's a shame I can't see you actually. I think um, I was going to ask people actually at the end if it's better to do something like this on Zoom rather than a Facebook Live. I like the idea that people can join in, but it also... Um, it's quite nice to have the interaction that comes with a Zoom. It's a little bit harder to interact on here. What do you think? Right, so we've got two viewers now. Um, please say hello if you're watching, because um, I can't... I can't quite see who else has come on now. I don't even know. Hey Cheryl! Oh, it's Cheryl. Lovely Cheryl. Hello. Don't be silly. I'm just um, I'm just hanging fire for a couple of minutes. Um, I was just saying that um, to Debbie that uh, who is also watching that it might be better to do a Zoom next time, um, just so I can interact a little bit more with people because it feels a, it feels a little bit random actually when you're just yeah you're just looking at a few comments that come through. Um, I probably will. I probably will just get started in a minute anyway. Uh, at least it'll be logged in here. Um, I can actually, I mean, I can actually bring people onto camera as well. So if you do want to say anything and be on camera, um, I can bring you on. I've never done that before. You'll all be switching off now. No. <laughs> You keep smiling at me and I can't see you. That is very true. It is, it is strange. Um, it is strange. Oh, there's a couple of other people that have just come on. If you've just joined, would you mind? Oh, hi, mum. Mum, she's always my big supporter. <laughs> always on. Hello, mum. And I think there's somebody else on there. Again. Can't quite see. Um... If you've just joined, so I know I've got Debbie, Cheryl, and Mum. Um, if you've just joined, can you just give me a little hello so I just know who I'm who I'm speaking to? Who's it gonna be? Oh no, they've gone. I've scared them off. Right, I think I will. Um, I think I'll make a start anyway because, like I say, this is going to be recorded so people can watch back at any time. Um, so thank you so much for joining me um, on my skincare discovery evening. Um, I realise I haven't really been talking lots specifically about rosacea. I touch on it from time to time, um, but I don't know why, actually. I don't know why I haven't done more. So I thought it would be um, nice to do a bit of an evening where I'm going to go through kind of my story a little bit. Um, I know, Debbie, you've heard bits of this. Um, I'm going to talk about what rosacea is, what I understand of it, um, the types of rosacea, um, I've got my notes here, um, triggers, the causes, um, diet and lifestyle, skincare, um, yeah, and then kind of some next steps. And I will be posting as well. Um, I'm going to try and type this up as well, some of these notes up, add it as a document and certainly post some links to helpful information um, moving forward. So rosacea. Um, 
And feel free to post any questions along the way at any point um, and I will do my best to answer it. I think it's really important me, for me to say um, first off that I am not a dermatologist um, and these are my own, um, this is my own experience, it's different for everybody and um, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to, I'm not here to diagnose people, um, I'm just sort of here to kind of offer up what I've learned along my own journey over the last decade, which sounds crazy when I say that. Um, so my story, so where it began, um, after I had Florence, um, my skin started to change and I started to notice um, a redness appearing on my cheek areas that um, kind of would come and go really. Um, I saw it come, but I was so preoccupied with um, having a new baby that I didn't pay too much attention to it, if I'm completely honest. Um, my ex-husband would often refer to my cheeks as farmer's cheeks. I'd been out, and, you know, like it looked like I'd been out in the wind for too long. Um, quite consumed with the baby and um, self-care really at that point wasn't um, high on my agenda anyway. Carried on, um, had Henry three years later and I noticed that my skin had progressively started to get worse. So that redness was um, kind of more persistent, visible blood vessels, um, little what I now know to be pustules um, and papules, I'll come on to that in a minute. And it started to make me feel pretty rubbish, if I'm honest. Um, it was quite a stressful period in my life, actually. And again, stress is a factor that I will, will come on to. So my skin really did flare. Um, it was quite hard to cover up. Um, I remember using lots of different skincare products to try and help. I didn't really understand what it was, um, but I knew that it made me feel really insecure um, I struggled with my confidence and as I said in a post earlier today, the thought of going barefaced um, or doing barefaced in public, um, let alone on a live video, um, would just not have happened. I just would not have felt comfortable and I know um, my mum, who's watching now, will um, probably remember how I kind of felt about my skin. Um, this is, it was really important for me today to come barefaced and um, I mean I've got a little bit of, um, I did a bit of sun drops um, last night so I've got a bit more of a glow and I had some SPF, SPF on earlier which has probably gone off but largely I just think um, yeah it's important for me to sort of show you um, I guess how my skin roughly is now and also the confidence that knowing understanding more about rosacea um the trigger what triggers it for me my methods to manage it um how that's really kind of given me the confidence to be able to do this so um and if any of you have experienced challenges with your skin i think you'll really understand what i mean skin our skin is a very emotive issue and it can have a huge psychological impact on us um and and how we behave so um so feeling pretty low um I, like I say, I've always used skincare products. I've always had a routine. Um, my mum has always um, had a very um, a very regimented skincare routine with a cleansed home moisturiser. So I grew up seeing her using that. So that's something that I follow through with. Um, but I felt um, I did a bit of what I call brand hopping. So I was always looking for a skincare brand that was going to miraculously make my skin... Um, feel good, look better and get rid of this redness that at the time, like I say, I didn't really know what it was. So I used a lot of brands, spent a lot of money. When um, I noticed that it was getting worse, um, and I can't remember now thinking back whether someone mentioned the word rosacea or not, but I went to the doctors and I showed them my skin and the doctor, um, I remember at the time, she went onto her computer, went onto, I think it was called Patient Direct, something like that on Google, um, Googled rosacea, printed it out and gave me a sheet of paper and said, um, it looks like you've got rosacea. I suggest you go and have a read through this. Um, but if I'm honest, you can't cure it. So my advice would be would to you would be to wear more makeup. 
And I remember thinking, I remember thinking at the time that that just didn't sit right with me that um, to treat this skincare problem, I should just wear more makeup. It, it, it just didn't, it just didn't sit right. And I certainly don't think, and that's not, and that's not something that I would advise to anybody who um, comes to me for skincare advice that just wear more makeup because that's not what it's about. Now, I'm not here to promote perfect skin. Um, we all have our imperfections with our skin. I am here to promote healthy skin and being able to manage um, any challenges that we have. So that that was kind of a bit of a point where I thought, you know, something wasn't sitting right. However, I went along, I went on courses of antibiotics, um, which again, I wasn't really happy to do. Um, as I will kind of move on to in terms of gut health, antibiotics are not great for your overall gut health because whilst they're killing off any of the um, bad bacteria, they're also taking out all your good bacteria as well. So I certainly wasn't happy when I was on antibiotics for six months and I did several courses. I can't even remember how many. I think at one point I just stopped um, because I thought I just don't want to take these anymore. I just don't want to be pumping myself full of antibiotics. Um, I also use topical antibiotic cream um, and again, something wasn't quite sitting right with me. Um, so I decided, um, I think it was 2000, so 2016, when I was going through my um, marriage breakup, my skin was horrendous, <laughs> like really bad. That um, was awful. Like for me, it was awful anyway. I, I have seen since, you know, some really severe cases of rosacea so I feel very very fortunate that it didn't go to that level but for me um I wasn't in a great place anyway and my skin flared um and stress is a big trigger to rosacea um so it was at that point 2016 really really bad point and I have a very good friend who um is a GP um and I really trust everything she says and she talked she talked sort of taught me through a little bit about um their training and um they don't spend too much time on the skin um is what is what you know she said at the time um and that actually there is it's it's a bit of an unknown rosacea is a bit of an unknown um an unknown disease so uh, an unknown sorry skin condition so there are lots of different things there's lots of research being done so actually People just don't know that much about it. So often they are looking, like GPs will be looking to treat the symptoms. And I remember her saying, let's get on top of this um, because it was having this counter impact, you know, counter effect on my mental health. So um, this last ditch of, last attempt of antibiotics to kind of get into a good place, a better place with my skin so that then I could look at alternatives, a more holistic approach um, and that was the best advice she gave, you know, best advice she could have given me because um, mentally it did really help me to kind of get a little bit of a handle on it. My fear was that as soon as you stop taking the antibiotics or the cream, it comes back again. And for me, that was the case. So um, after that, I went on a bit of a journey of um, trying to find out what rosacea is what it what the causes were what the triggers were and how I could take a more um like I say holistic approach natural approach to treating the symptoms that I was experiencing so first of all um people often say well what what is rosacea I mean it's often a word that we hear around um but often people don't really kind of know exactly what it is or they might know little bits about it so um in essence it's a chronic inflammatory skin condition so when we say chronic, um, it's not going to go, um, but it can be managed, which is what I have found very successfully. Um, it typically starts from the age of around 30 um, and it is more prominent in women, but it is more severe in men. And I'll kind of come on to some of the differences or some of the traits that you might have seen in other people. Um, it presents itself with redness which goes on to be very persistent and a thickening of the skin. You also get papules, which are small red bumps. Um, and when they accumulate pus, that's when they become a pustule. So we've got papules and pustules, and they are different to a blackhead or a whitehead. Um, we get a flushing and warmth in the cheeks. 
um, nose and the chin and forehead. So predominantly, um, for me, my, my flushing was coming in the cheek area. And you can kind of see, here, you can see here, this is where I do experience it. You can see that even though, like I say, I've had a bit of um, SPF on today, my tinted one, you can see that redness here. Um, now, there are four types of rosacea, which is something, like I say, I'm always learning. I'm always kind of looking up information on rosacea and it, it is complex and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm trying to break it down in the best way I can and I'm going to continue to do that. But the four types of rosacea. So the first one is a redness of the face. So that is the most common um, it's invisible dilated blood vessels. So um, we can't really, I don't think we're going to be able to see them here. I'm probably going to need to take some more um, close up pictures. Um, but you will have seen in the picture that I posted before this event, you can see some of those dilated. So the blood vessels coming to the surface. Flushing. So when your skin kind of suddenly gets red for different reasons, different triggers, um, that can become, like I say, more persistent, more frequent. And also another sign of that redness is the skin is very sensitive. So sensitive to products, sensitive to the environment, sensitive to things that are, are happening in your lifestyle. The second type of rosacea is papulo, papulopustular rosacea. So that is where you're getting the redness, but you're also getting acne-like breakouts, but they are the papules and pustules that I talked about earlier. So mine actually kind of changed as time went on. It went from just a redness to this papulopustular rosacea. And they are little blighters, I have to say, because they're not a spot. But you saw back in the day, I mean, I will say now, I never, I would never squeeze a spot now. Now I know what I know. Um, I do not squeeze spots. But in those days, you think, oh, they're only like a tiny, you can just see like this little build up of pus and you, sorry, it sounds horrible when you're talking about pussy spots. Um, and I would sort of try and kind of squeeze it. Really bad mistake. There's nothing really there. They're not particularly, and they just leave marks and it gets redder. It's more inflamed. Just, yeah. And they started to get more frequent over all over my cheeks. And that was what I was really struggling to kind of cover up. Um, from time to time now, um, I will get the odd, um, I call it my rosacea spot. It's really bizarre. And I get them in the same spot. So generally hormonal based, actually time in a month. Or when I come in to talk about some of the triggers, I will get, I'll, I'll see it. I'll just see one of these little pustular spots. And I'm like, ah, that's interesting. What's triggered that? So yeah, Cheryl, you're saying that's what you're experiencing. Yeah, really interesting because sometimes you think, what is this? Is this just a breakout of spots? But if you've generally got the red note, redness as well, that is um, that is a sign, you know, that's something like when they're looking to diagnose your skin, that is something that they would say. Like I say, I'm not here to make a diagnosis, but based on the evidence, that is something they would say. The third type, um, which is very rare, is called rhinophyma. Now, rhinophyma, you may have seen this on people, generally more common in men is this thickening of the nose, which leads to a very red, bulbous, thick skin. So it's almost like um, like they've had, you know, like if they're in the movies, you had added skin added to the nose. So really kind of bulbous. Um, so that is that type, which I like I say, that's a very rare type of rosacea, but that is generally seen in men. The fourth type of rosacea, which I had no idea about at all, is ocular rosacea. And this is to all do with the eyes. So it's connected to the eye area. So you can get very bloodshot, um, very bloodshot, watery eyes. You get a lot of dryness, really dryness around them. Um, they can feel gritty and you can have cysts like on your eyes as well. Um, so like I say, who knew? I, I never knew that you could get rosacea there. So they are four, the different four types of rosacea. Just making sure I'm covering everything. Triggers. Um, does anyone have any ideas um, or if you have, um, if you do think you are suffering with rosacea, what might trigger it for you? Just, you can pop them in the comments below um, if you want to say anything that you think has had an impact on your skin. Um, for me, um, or for gen generally, the biggest one, um, is sun exposure. 
massive, massive one for rosacea. So direct exposure to the sun, um, not wearing an SPF, um, really one of the, like the, the biggest factor that people say. <clears throat> oh, hi, Lou. Nice to see you. Spicy food and booze. Yes, absolutely. They are on my list. Um, interestingly, um, something I was reading about spicy food and um, like I say, there's quite a lot of, um, it's quite a lot of science information um, to take in, but it's something to do with the chemicals in the food um, that have an impact on the skin. So like I say, I really want to do more research around that so that I can kind of give you more information because I, I am the sort of person that I'm like, well, why does it do that? Why? Why would spicy food? But it's something particularly in foods of spice, there's a chemical released um, that triggers the skin. Um, Debbie, you say exercise and alcohol. Yeah. So high intensity, uh, high intensity alcohol. That sounds a bit odd. High intensity, um, uh, exercise in particular, where you're raising your heart rate and you're in, you know, you're obviously getting hot as well. That can have a real impact on the skin because you're, you're overheating the skin. Now, heat's a big thing for me so if I get hot if I'm in the car and the heating I often turn the fans down on the car because I can feel it on my skin and I can feel my skin it almost feels like a slight burning on the inside sensation um Cheryl stress lack of sleep um still working through various ones trying to identify them yeah, it's really good. I will come on to at the end about um, journaling and keeping a bit of a record about when your triggers are. It's really useful. But stress is a real big one. Um, emotional stress um, can have a real, as with anything, stress can present itself in many ways in a physical form. But certainly for our skin, that, that is a big trigger. Um, hot baths. So again, anything where you're raising the temperature of your skin, hot baths, steam rooms. I love a steam room. I love a sauna. I know I'm going to kind of pay a little bit of a price afterwards. Um, humidity, indoor heat, um, your skincare, so the products you're putting on your skin, your cosmetics, the makeup you've got on your skin, um, the wind, they can all have an impact. Um, what When I found out about that, it was a little bit disheartening because I thought, well, um, there are certain things that I don't want to stop. So um, whilst I have cut out alcohol um for a number of reasons not actually just for my skin um exercise for me was a big one i was you know i really like um high intensity exercise and it's not something that i was prepared to stop doing as i know i've talked to you debbie about as well important part of my life um so what i do do now is try and protect my skin so making sure it's kept hydrated um so it's not like searching for moisture so i'll always put protective barrier on before i work out um a very my moisturizer i'll just put a thin layer of that on i'm also good if i have been out so tomorrow i'm outside all day um it's going to be sunny um, I will have an SPF on, which I'll be topping up. But when I get home, I will be putting on um, a face mask that has anti-inflammatory properties that will really hydrate the skin. So I'm quite good now at recognising when, after something that has probably, you know, that could trigger it to be worse, when I need to kind of add other things in. So they are some of the triggers um, that you might see with rosacea. On to the causes. <laughs> Now, this bit is a bit, the bit that is a bit of a minefield because the court largely, um, largely the causes are unknown. There's lots of research and I'm going to post some links to um, some interesting um, articles. Um, the Rosacea Society is really informative. There's lots of great information on there. So I will link to that as well. But largely the causes are unknown. But what we do know is that it's an inflammatory disorder that's based on a finding of an abnormal innate immune response to our innate immune, immune response system. So this is a sciencey bit. Um, our immune cells and molecules that trigger a defense response when they encounter bacteria or viruses. This process is what's malfunctioning. Um, now, other factors can relate to the blood flow to our skin, our skin bacteria. It can be microscopic skin mites um, and also sun damage as well. 
Um, so again, if we haven't been kind of protecting that barrier from UVA rays, UVB rays, that can cause it as well. So to, for me, um, it's what I have found really interesting is the this kind of um, the trigger defense in my immunity. Um, so in some cells, rosacea is thought to be triggered by um, an imbalance in the microorganisms that live in our gut and on our skin. And for me, this this is like I say, this is my own experience. So the imbalance for me is what I have found, um, I think, to be the, the, the trigger for my rosacea, what's kind of causing it. Um, and that's what I have tended to focus on. So when I say the, mic the microorganisms in the gut, um, if you imagine your gut, and there's lots about gut health at the moment, it's so, so fascinating, um, multi-layered. But if you imagine your gut to be a little bit like the Amazon rainforest, um, and over time, pollutants come in. So that could be in the form of antibiotics, killing off. So the, the, your Amazon rainforest in your gut is made up of all these bacteria, good bacteria, trying to fight, you know, fight and keep you healthy, um, do lots of different jobs. And there are trillions of different types of bacteria. Um, so imagine if you've got these, like, you know, soldiers coming in, um, soldiers, not soldiers, maybe, uh, but people like, but oh, I can't get my words out now. Um, things that are going to affect the, that pollute the Amazon rainforest. So killing off the good bacteria. So that is what I have largely focused on. I have looked really hard at my gut health and I've looked at what I am doing orally and also what I'm applying topically. So really, for me, that's been really important. How I've kind of been nurturing the skin and helping the rosacea from the top and also inside, how I've been helping to readdress that balance of good and bad bacteria. Does that make sense? Like I say, it is it is a complex subject and um, what's worked for me might not necessarily work for everybody, um, but it's certainly something I've really looked into foods that help promote good bacteria. Um, how have I done that? Okay, so this has been the interesting part for sure. Um, so I have, um, I was vegetarian, was pescatarian up until, gosh, I don't even know now, maybe eight months ago. And then I switched to vegetarian and now I'm actually vegan because I have an intolerance to cow's milk. So I've got a plant-based, plant-based diet. Um, and I am very conscious about making sure I've got fiber rich foods, which are amazing for the gut. Um, I'm also very interested in probiotics. Um, now, probiotics, if you don't know, are living strains of bacteria that add to the population of the good bacteria in your gut. So they're going to help reintroduce these good bacteria into your gut. Um, so the ones I taught that were being killed off, I'm looking for new strains of good bacteria to be brought in. Now, Cheryl, you've just asked if I take a supplement. So you will see on the market, there are lots of probiotics. Um, from what I have read, um, and I have taken supplements, there isn't sufficient research to support at the minute um, that the supplements are necessarily um, increasing that good bacteria. Uh, there have been cases where there are companies that use quite aggressive marketing tactics to um, promote and the research is based on a very, very small sample. So you have to kind of consider the ethics of that. And I would, you know, I would encourage you to do your own research on that. Um, however, specialists who look at the gut and the health of the gut talk a lot about the benefits of fermented foods um, that being the strongest natural form of probiotic that you can find um, so Debbie who's watching I've talked to Debbie about my own experience and what I um, some of those uh, how I got those fermented foods into my diet now the first one that made a real difference to my skin um, a lady told me about it and um, I didn't look back after that. This was a this was a big turning point for me was I started drinking fermented goat's milk. Um, I will link the brand underneath. They're a company called Chuckling Goat 
and um, I thought this is really interesting okay and um, I signed up for a course and you got your new milk delivered every three weeks now this milk it it's a bit like it's not sour it's and maybe maybe Debbie will post what she thinks of it it is well it is kind of sour it's not gone off milk it's like a sour taste and when you open the bottle it fizzes up it's fizzy like fizzy sour milk I'm really saying it to you I know um it fizzes up and it kind of just it starts kind of exploding off everywhere because it's kind of still in that fermenting in that fermenting um phase and um I tried and I thought oh my god I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to cope with this but weirdly, um, they say that when you introduce new strains of bacteria, your body becomes quite accustomed to them. So it starts to crave that bacteria. So in the morning, I would come down, and I don't know if Debbie's the same, but I would, I'd almost be like, where's my milk? Where's my milk? And um, it was something I really craved. It was, because if, if you were to taste it now, like people, I have people come around and they try a little bit and they'd say, oh, this is awful. Um, but I really, lo I began to love it. Um, it tastes like fizzy liquid parmesan, but it's actually quite nice. We are selling this massively, Debbie. But you've got two people here that um, have drank it and we're both saying it's good. Now, with fermented foods, again, um, something like that can be very detoxifying for the gut. So actually starting off small and building up is um, the way forward. I think I poured myself a massive glass and you know about it. It is detoxing the system. Um so you do have to yeah just be mindful of that they do guide you on the site but that was a big turning point in my skin um i began to see um a reduction in the um papules and pustules that i was experiencing and a cal and a slight calming of the redness so i was thinking this is great this is good i'm kind of helping the good bacteria so i went on a bit more of a quest to find out about other fermented foods and um, so if you're unaware, I'm going to just bring this little jar down. So this is sauerkraut. Um, this one is actually one I've bought, but it's really easy to make. It's pretty much cabbage, cabbage, carrots, more cabbage, um, onion. You can, you know, it's got, I'm just trying to see what this one's got in it. Uh, and a lot of salt salt and then water it's, it is really easy to make um my partner makes it he makes big vats of it um it's all about a lot of massaging the salt into the um into the cabbage and the carrot and then just letting it sit um and it will ferment um now having a bit of this in your diet really good as well so um this is great this could be great in sandwiches on salads even just having a spoonful um again something they do say is actually as well little little bits of different fermented foods are really great um so that's a sauerkraut that's an example of golden turmeric sauerkraut and i got this actually from holland and barrett so i bought that to have in the fridge another example of um, fermented foods is uh, kombucha if you've all heard of kombucha it's so much more readily available now i've even had a go at making my own that is really interesting um i you start off a little bit like with sourdough. You start off with a starter, which is called a, uh, a scoby, scooby. Oh, I think I call it a scooby, but it's actually a scoby. Maybe I can't remember now. But anyway, I was um, brought this scoby into work, and it it pretty much looked like some sort of body part. It was very weird. It was in this circle box, and it was this like a jelly, like a flattened jellyfish. And um, again, you feed that, it ferments, and you can make some really, really wonderful drinks. I'd love to get more into that. I had a bit of a go, made some raspberry infused kombucha, lovely. Um, so the best form is making your own, um, just because we know it's not get anything else added in, um, other than natural flavorings like from fruit. Um, so kombucha is one. And then going back to the kefir, so, um, I love the kefir, and um, but the only barrier for me was the ongoing cost of it. But I got really, I guess I, I guess I probably got a little bit hooked onto it that I thought if I stop this, my rosacea is going to flare again, which isn't necessarily the case at all because obviously we're in heart, we're, we're increasing all the good bacteria in the gut. But what I did switch on to, and again, it's not something I'm religious with at the moment. I'd like to get better habits with this. Is making my own um, 
water-based kefir because I did find that I would get a little bit of bloating from um, from the goat's milk and I think that that kind of links to my own intolerance but you can make water kefir and there the kefir is made from little granules and um, it's mixed with water and sugar um, you can add molasses it's really easy it's just a case of remembering to do it remembering to strain remembering to do your second ferment i'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of how to make it on here but again i will link to um the kefir granules you can buy them off amazon and it comes with a really simple instruction um little instruction guide of how to make it and again that's a really cheap way of making your own your granules if you look after them and keep them healthy will keep on um producing they will grow um and you can kind of keep on make, making these batches of kefir water um so kefir and, and they say that kefir kefir water in particular is the strongest form of probiotic that you can find so there are quite a lot of ways that you can introduce um fermented foods into your diet um either making that yourself or picking some things up at the supermarket um the other one is prebiotics now again this is something i haven't really touched on so much um so pre prebiotics are um, specialised plant fibres that feed, they, they act as food for the good bacteria. So they're going to really help the good bacteria thrive. So prebiotics and probiotics, that is the difference in them. So that can really, really help with our gut health. Does anyone, um, I'd love to know if any of you are um, have kind of looked into your gut health at all. Do you take any supplements? Do you do anything to support that? I know obviously... Debbie, um, you love your goat kefir and um, yeah, and it'd be great to, yeah, just great to hear in the comments if you found that that has helped your skin. Just want to have a little drink of water. This is where I think it's easier to be on Zoom when you can have that interaction. Okay, so yeah, you took up for IBS symptoms. Well, interesting, Cheryl. I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you um, separately after this, but um, someone close to me suffers with IBS and the introduction of kefir water into their diet had a huge, huge, a huge, huge impact. And I've also got a really great book that touches on... Um, that talks a lot about gut health and there's a whole section on IBS. So I will, um, I will link that as well. Debbie says, I probably haven't been having it for long enough, but enjoying it. Yeah. It's hard sometimes to tell. I, I think I ended up taking mine pretty much for maybe a year. Um, and as with anything, it's kind of about, it is about consistency. So keeping, keeping things up. And I think interestingly, as I was reading up a little bit more today, I thought, yeah, I need to, I need to touch base a little bit more and kind of look at some of the things that I was doing that maybe I'm not doing now. So that's diet. And also, like I say, I've, so I've made lifestyle changes. Um, alcohol definitely did make my rosacea flare. Um, and, uh, that I think for me, that's helped. That's not the, um, answer for everybody, um, in terms of just cutting that out, um, um, that, you know, that, that's not the answer for everyone cutting it out. So, like I say, there's some things that people think, well, although it's a trigger, that, that is something I want to do. Um, and you might just have to accept, but actually doing other things. So for example, looking at your, really looking at your diet, increasing the fiber, increasing the fermented foods will help, will, will hopefully help. Um, so moving on. Oh, let me just have a little Lou, Lou, little, little Lou, a little look at Lou. So Lou says, when I was first diagnosed, I was given antibiotics, but came off them to have kids. It made no difference anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, my uh, definitely um, antibiotics did did work for a while. But like I said earlier at the start, antibiotics are there to um, treat the symptoms. So they're not they're not managing the root cause. So, and it's unrealistic to think that you're going to be on antibiotics because it's a chronic skin condition. It's not, it's not just going to be cured and gone with a course of antibiotics. And I think that's what I wanted to get across. Um, 
that although there might be patches where actually it's really bad and you do need to seek a course of treatment to help control it and that's where dermatologists come in um for me i and and you know the purpose of this is to try some other things first before you might have to go down that line as i said i'm not here to diagnose you but I feel that if you can maybe just try and make a few lifestyle changes um, and things that you know, you have that information, knowledge is always power. Um, you can try a more uh, natural approach to treating it. And then if you're still struggling, I would always recommend going to seek advice from a dermatologist. Um, you might, they, they will give you a course of treatment um, and a plan. And then longer term, once you've, you know, if it is really particularly bad, longer term, then you can kind of look to implement some of these alongside it some of the things we've suggested um, and also looking at things like skincare and cosmetics. So, so they were some changes that I made. Um, I'm also very aware um, about hot, I love a hot bath, um, but I'm also aware to have the window open or just try and kind of keep my face as cool as I can, which is, is often difficult in a hot bath. But the other big thing, so aside from diet um, and where Tropic has really um, played a part in this for me is the skincare that I um, use. So as I've said, um, hopped from different skincare brand to different skincare brand in the hope that I would treat my rosacea. You know, I would I'd get a flash of something saying it would reduce redness. Um, I'd try it, but I didn't necessarily understand what was in my product. And with anything with your skin, it's really important to understand the ingredients that are being used and if they are suitable for your skin. Too often we are targeted with huge marketing messages all over by, you know, often big brands and we, ne we don't necessarily know what exactly is in it. And I would always say whatever you're going to put on your skin, just make sure you do know. And especially if you are experiencing challenges with your skin, it's even more important. So... It's really important for skincare, for skin that is suffering with rosacea, for your skincare regime to be gentle. Um, we want to clean our face with um, a cleanser that's going to be non-abrasive. Um, we're going to use lukewarm water. Um, we're never going to pull at the skin. We're never going to um, rub, you know, rub hard with a towel. It's all about blotting and being gentle. Remember, the skin is inflamed. Um, it's sent, often it's going to be sensitive, so it's really, really important that everything we use is very gentle. There are lots of skin products out there, spe specifically around, like, especially exfoliating products um, that, or, you know, so I used to love a facial scrub, but I never really, and this might sound a bit silly, I never thought about exfoliants really irritating my skin. So I remember, you know, scrubbing with a um, like a salt scrub um, but again it's abrasive so it's really hard on this area that's already inflamed so it's really it, it's just really vital um, that we're using ingredients that are gentle um, that haven't got any added chemicals in that are going to aggravate the skin and this is where I say knowing and understanding what's in your skincare is really important. Something like Tropic um, the cleanliness um, and largely the anti-inflammatory properties that are in a lot of the products that I use have really helped to calm and soothe the redness that I was experiencing, whilst also helping to kind of repair the skin's barrier. So um, for me, um, cleansing has been really important and using um, something like this smoothing cleanser that is very gentle um, and allows me to work that in really effectively to the skin to make sure the pores are clean um, and I'm not pulling. I'm using a soft organic bamboo cloth. Um, oh, damn it. That good old apricot scrub. Yes, the apricot. What was that? It's an Ives. Was it the St. Ives one? We all used to use, yeah. That is so true. I had that as well. It's the good old St. Ives scrub. Yeah, I mean, we love a scrub because we think obviously um, exfoliants are there. Um, they're designed to take away the dead skin cells. So the surface of the skills take, skin take away the dead skin cells to allow the new ones to come through to um, reveal brighter skin. So that's the purpose behind exfoliants. But there are different types of exfoliants. You can get a scrub, you can get them in um, a peel. So more of a, a serum peel. 
Um, you can get them in a much gentler form, which do the same job, but you do. But for me, for example, I still like to exfoliate from time to time with my um, with an exfoliator. But what I will do is rather than just applying it directly, I will mix it in with some cleanser. So I have that added, um, I guess it's like an added layer of protection it's not as abrasive so that's a bit of a tip if you are if you do have sensitive skin so i do that and that works really well for me um so as i said bamboo cloth really important not to use um a hot cloth i used to love um i'm sure probably most people are familiar with the hot cloth um hot cloth company i feel like i shouldn't really name names on here should i um i used to love a hot cloth i'd be like I to pop it on my face, soaking up the heat. <laughs> Little did I know uh, that actually this was really inflaming my blood vessels are already at the surface. So that heat was all, was kind of really adding to it. So it should always be lukewarm water that you're putting on your skin. Really, really important. Same when you're in the shower. Try not to put your face directly under that hot. Like if you like a hot shower, just try and keep your face out of it as best you can. Um, so cleansing. Cleansing, really important. Um, I actually double cleanse, which I am pretty certain has been a bit of a, there a couple of things that have been a bit of a game changer in my routine. I double cleanse. So to make sure my pores are completely clean, I go in with a um, water activated cleansing powder. Very, very gentle, but is very good at making sure the pores are completely clean. Now, a benefit from your pores being completely clean means that the other products and the other ingredients that you're trying to put into your skin can do their job properly. They can get through. Imagine having a really clogged pore. Your pores are like little, imagine like a hole, um, your sebaceous glands. So imagine them full of dirt, makeup, um, free radicals, toxins, all that sort of thing. Imagine if they stay full. Um, it won't, the other products won't be able to get down. They're trying to get down to the deeper layers of the skin surface to help with our elasticity, our collagen production, um, our, our cell renewal process. So they're trying to help with all that. But if, this, if the pores are blocked, they the products just won't get through. They won't do their job. So double cleansing has been really important to allow the other ingredients that I'm introducing into my skin to help with the anti-inflammatory properties to do their job. So I will double cleanse at night. I will take all, I will let my makeup melt away with this. And the job of the cleanser is to take away the makeup and dirt. And the job of the cloth is to take away the cleanser. This cloth is not taking off your makeup, it's taking off the cleanser that is already melted away all of your makeup um, and general dirt on your face. This is going in for a second wash, so like washing out the pores, it's not drying at all. And this is what I would use in the morning just to make sure, although my face is pretty clean, just to make sure um, it's, it's, it's thoroughly clean in the morning, ready to go. Um, I then go in with a vitamin toner. So a pore refining mist, this has got hyaluronic acid in, which is really good at hydrating the skin. And that's something that I um, have found really important with my rosacea. I can often feel when my skin is starting to get dehydrated, it feels tight, like I'm doing this because that's how it makes me feel. It feels tight and I can feel my skin starting to warm. Um, the toner is a really great protective barrier because obviously we, our skin is, sens my skin is sensitive. So it's all about protection. Um, so whilst feeding it and hydrating it, I want to make sure it's protected and it's got the right, um, the right barriers for it. So this is going to act as a protective barrier for all the free radicals that are in the air. Um, it also hydrates um, and um, it's just a gorgeous refresher spray. I try and carry this about with me when I remember, and I say this to people and sometimes I don't always remember myself, but it's great to have with you in your bag. So right now, I can actually start to feel that I am feeling a little bit warm. Um, it's probably because I'm talking a lot. I can just spritz my face and you can just do this in the day and it will give you that boost of hydration and it's really cooling. And um, yeah, that just feels instantly lovely. So that's the job of a toner. Um, I then go in with added hydration for my skin. Um, now the Rainforest Dew, this is a hydration serum. Um, it's a water-based serum. It comes in a pipette and it can be applied directly onto the skin. So just a few drops and pressed in. So I'm not rubbing, I'm not tugging at the skin, I'm pressing it in. Or you can apply a few drops and press it into the skin, like so. Now it's got evergreen fern extract in, 
and that has is amazing for anti-inflammatory properties so whilst the hydration is really going to help with my elasticity which is what we want we want our skin to say taut you know if we, once we start to really lose our elastin that's when our face gets saggy and droopy so we're trying to always make sure the skin is hydrated um this has been a lovely product for me i um use this morning and night um and i just pat it in and wait for it to air dry um then i go in with a skin feast the skin feast which is the moisturizer now the skin feast has got like 20 plant and fruit extracts in it's incredibly nourishing it's very lightweight i'm just going to show you that's a sufficient amount one pump and at first i thought no this isn't no but that is enough you need one pump you distribute across the face and gently i'm just going to smooth that in and it will sink in it's got some hyaluronic acid in as well um, but it's most importantly, it's going to feed and nourish the skin. And again, I can't express to you. I think when I think back now to the nutrients that I was putting in my skin, I don't really think I, I didn't have any clue. The skin is an extension of our bodies. Um, it's the largest organ. And for some reason, we don't see it the same. We think a lot about the foods that we're putting on, we're, we're putting in our bodies. You know, have I had my five fruit and veg a day? Have I, you know, have I had my juice? Have I had my smoothie? Um, I'm, I'm having a salad today, get some extra nuts in. It's the same for our skin. Our skin needs feeding. It needs to be kept healthy. Um, so again, when I talked about feeding from the inside, but also feeding from the outside, applying topically products that are going to nourish the skin. So that's the skin feast. Um, then, I think this has to be my favorite, um, is the super greens. So um, this is a nutrient boost oil. Um, think of it as a green shot for your skin. It is full of goodness. Broccoli, kale extract. It smells like it looks. Let's just show you here. It is this beautiful green colour. Look at that. Um, it is a green shot for your skin. It is incredible. The big thing... Um, Lou says it smells so bad. Do you know what, Lou? Again, I, I love it. I lap it up in the morning. I'm like, my greens. But lots of people say the thing that makes it smell is it's got the tamanu oil in it. The tamanu is a bit of a magic ingredient, really. And it's used in a few of Tropics, pro Tropics products. And it is, tamanu is particularly great for people who have got um, skin challenges such as rosacea, uh, psoriasis, eczema, dry skin, um, it's great for healing, for scarring, so when it, it, because it accelerates skin cellular repair. So it, it speeds up the cells repairing themselves at a faster rate than they would normally. Um, but it is... Oh, where's it all gone? Oh, it's gone up there. But it is the tamanu that has got that strong scent. Um, I think you do get used to it after a while. Um, if you're putting it on and you've got a partner asleep next to you, they might not like it. Um, but... I'm going to just show you there, if I can show you without it falling off my skin. Um, now, I would apply this after, and the great thing about an oil, also, sorry, the big thing about the tamanu oil, I should say, um, is it's anti-inflammatory properties. Now, you can see, as I'm doing my skincare, you can see that my skin is like I've got these bright lights on as well, which are not helping, but it is it it does redden because I'm obviously touching my skin and my skin's sensitive. So this is why it's even more important to be gentle with it. Any kind of interference with the skin, you know, it is you can see it's getting slightly redder. But that doesn't that I know that and that doesn't concern me because I'm doing all the goodness. So putting all the goodness on it. Um the um, oil is acts as a lubricant, so it's really easy to, um, it's always really easy to apply, um, but it is that anti-inflammatory, that new extra boost of nutrients that I found really helpful. And adding an oil to my regime, so um, ending on an oil, so Cheryl, you've just asked me the order for serum, oil and moisturiser. So a good way of remembering it is it goes lightest to thickest. So after you've cleansed your face, 
you go in with a toner and that's like an air mist so it's it's not even it's almost like water mist so water mist then you're going with your water-based serum because that's the next thickest then you're going with your moisturizer because it's getting a bit thicker and then you're ending with an oil to lock everything in and the oil being the thickest product so i'm ending the night with my oil and actually the difference to my skin in the morning of just adding an oil on the softness and the suppleness so aside from the rosacea just how it feels just completely different so um and i think that's also part of it i think um i think I feel a lot I feel a lot different about my rosacea as well because my skin um feels in such good good condition in terms of how it feels so it feels healthy I know I know it's being fed I know it's being treated in the right way um so I think that's it generally overall it has a healthy glow it looks there's something like springy so when you're focusing on your hyaluronic acid um and keeping your skin supple and your elastin there's something where and i can see it with people who use tropic like i just want to poke their skin and um it's got that sort of springy sensation so aside from the redness I, my skin just feels in such better condition that it's helped with my confidence if that makes sense um so debbie you love a bedtime face massage with super greens there are so many benefits benefits to facial massage so many benefits um you always would need an oil if you're ever going to do a facial massage you need an oil because you need the lubrication you don't want to be pulling at your face and that's what you would be doing if you had a moisturizer so oil is essential um, facial massage can be really, really great, helping stress relief, um, removing tension from your, we, we hold a lot of tension here above our eyes, um, draining our lymphatic nodes as well, um, helping with our, giving our face a bit of a workout, so helping with lifting and tightening up, um, so we can really train these facial muscles facial muscles um like any like you would exercise any other muscle we again we don't think about our face but you can over time train these muscles so you can really kind of help with lifting so facial massage i'm a big big fan of um, but like i say we don't ever if your skin's sensitive you don't want to be dragging or pulling at the skin so making sure you've got enough lubrication is key um now the other product that i do i do love and i probably use this at least twice a week um is a deep hydration um soothe uh, soothing cooling mask and it does what it says on the tin now um i'm just it's got a lovely berry scent um you can't really see it. i've got not a lot left actually of this part it's like a yogurt like consistency so here we go it's really it, it's cool it feels cool when you put it on it feels like you're putting sort of yogurt on your face um it's going to intensely hydrate um it's got gosh what's it got um oh there's a there's a plant that holds its oh that's it the resurrection flower which can go without water for like seven years so it just shows how much fluid it can hold um but most importantly, it's got anti, it's the super berries that have got anti-inflammatory properties. So again, as I said, tomorrow when I've been outside, I will whack this straight on and I will just leave it on. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be in a state of zen to enjoy a face mask. Um, I put it on and then I get on with my daily, um, I get on with whatever I'm doing. I just leave that face mask on to help cool, reduce any redness, any inflammation that might have been caused because tomorrow it's going to be sunny. Um like I say, I'm going to be exposed. There's not much shelter or shade. So whilst I have an SPF on, um, I know that my, my face is going to be in the sun. And actually, I probably should wear a cap. That would probably be very sensible. Um, so Cheryl, yeah, you like the deep page. That's great when your skin has been at its worst. Yes, um, really, really good. Just helps to calm everything down. And Debbie puts it in the fridge. That That is a winner, Debbie. I definitely need to do that. I haven't done that yet, but I do need to do that. Um, so <clears throat> the other thing I want to touch on is SPF. Um, give me a little emoji thumbs up or something if you wear an SPF every day, a separate SPF. And let's see, I'll just have another little sip of my water. I am aware of the time, um, ladies, so don't worry, I will be wrapping up um, in about five minutes or so. No takers yet for the SPF. <laughs> so SPF, really, really, oh, good job, Deb. 
really, really important for a rosacea sufferer with someone who someone's skin is very sensitive, someone's skin's barrier is already compromised. Um, it's so important to wear an SPF, a separate SPF. The reason I say separate is whilst you might get some coverage from um, your makeup or your um, uh, hi, um, your makeup or your what was I going to say a moisturizer you're always better to make sure you've got a full coverage for UVA, a broad spectrum for UVA, which stands for the age, the A stands for aging and UVB and the B stands for burning. So the UVAs are around all year round, wherever there is light, there are UVA rays. So do not be, um, do not be under the kind of misconception that if the sun's not out, you don't need SPF, you do. This will hugely, hugely help protect your skin's barrier. So remember, you're already sensitive to heat. You're sensitive to the sun. So this is going to be your best friend. So um, Tropic have two. Um, I'm obsessed with the skin, the, skin shade, the, six, the skin shade, which is a tinted facial SPF, Factor 50. And I use that instead of a BB cream. So that's like my first layer of foundation that I use. It adjusts your skin's natural colouring, gives you a gorgeous glow, and I know my face is fully protected. If I haven't got that one on, I've got the Sunday on, which, um, again, really lightweight, um, slides on, non-greasy, acts as a great primer underneath your makeup. So you won't feel it because a lot of time people think, oh, I don't want loads of layers on. I don't want to, you know, it's greasy. Not at all. This is more like a primer. So um, I switch between the two, but largely it is this one that I would use on a daily basis. So SPF is king. Um just touching on um, makeup, again, another factor that I hadn't taken into consideration with my own skin. So really important, as with your skincare, to understand what is in your makeup, what you are putting on your skin, largely probably for about 12 hours a day. I know, you know, when I go to work, makeup's on at seven and it's probably not off until eight. So it's on your skin for a long time. So it's really important to understand what's in it. So when I say what's in it, you're looking for things like fragrancing, um, any, if it's bought from, if it's bought from a shop, then generally they've got to have added preservatives in to keep the shelf life. Tropic are coming fresh from the factory. So they want um, people to use any of their products, their skincare and their makeup in the freshest state possible so they can get the benefit from the ingredients. And obviously those ingredients aren't going to last, you know, the, the, they're not going to last forever. So generally Tropic's products have got about a year's shelf life. So, Makeup that's in the shop um, has got to have added stuff in. So there, there are other chemicals and fragrancing and things like that that are in products that can have an impact on your skin. When we're talking about rosacea, I know I keep saying it, we're talking about sensitive skin. So it's sensitive to the environment, it's sensitive to products, it's sensitive to everything. So it's really important to be mindful about what you're putting on. So again, I would just encourage you to have a look at what you're using. Um, Make sure you're aware, you're looking for things, again, that are going to help nourish the skin. Um, for example, my concealer has got repairing properties. So um, if I've got any like little breakouts, it will, it, will, it will just encourage and help that skin to repair as well. So nourishing, hydrating the skin, that's really, really important. So I'll just touch briefly on that. Um, now, next steps. Um, it's, it's a really good idea to keep a journal. Um, and this is something I did uh, to monitor your skin, what's triggering it. So kind of keep a little food diary. And I know it's just it's something else to do, but just keep it with you. Keep a little food diary and just jot down when your rosacea flares. So what triggers it? So when you notice that, when you notice if it's redness that you're experiencing, it, if it's the little um, papules and pustules that you're noticing, just jot that down when it's happening. If it's a burning or stinging sensation, which can ex you can experience as well, just write those down. Just even, even if it's for a week, just pop it down and see and, and see what's happening. This will allow you to kind of make some lifestyle changes. And I hope I've given you some examples of things that you can do. So certainly with diet, um, the fiber rich foods, the fermented foods, um, just being aware of, of some of your triggers, trying to maybe reduce some of those. Um, making some steps yourself, looking at your skincare, looking at your makeup and um, making those changes for yourself to see if they have an impact. Rosacea is a very uh, personal experience and one, one person's experience isn't going to be the same for everyone. So what I've said today, um, it may be useful, uh, it might not be. And like I say, the last kind of resort, certainly 
Um, well, I don't mean the last resort, but I, I chose to go down this route first before I saw a dermatologist. And actually, that's really helped me to manage my rosacea to a point where I am very comfortable with it now. Um, it, you know, I accept that it's a chronic skin condition. So um, I, like I say, I'm not hoping for perfect skin. I'm happy with the skin, uh, with how my skin is managed now. I'm still learning. And um, I read something actually really recently about tomatoes. <laughs> and I'm really interested to look at more specific foods um, to see actually if they do trigger, you know, trigger more of a redness for me um than other foods so it's something that i will be exploring a little bit more um but i certainly don't feel now that i need support from a dermatologist to you know i i have i have a good routine that i'm able to um, implement and i understand my skin a whole lot better i'm i've talked for about an hour so um if you are with me still well done you that is amazing um I hope that's been helpful. I will certainly be looking into more um, and, and, and trying to um, talk more about rosacea and give some more tips and kind of document some more of my um, my daily routines with things and some of the food, you know, the foods that I'm eating, all that sort of thing. Are there any questions that anyone's um, that anyone's got before I let you all enjoy the rest of your evening? Just gonna wait a minute. Oh, silence. <laughs> silence from my own voice. Oh, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, I hope I hope it was useful. It is there's so much to it. It's uh it really is uh, really, really fascinating. Um yeah, very, very interesting. And like the, the root causes that they are you know, constantly researching. Let me just see. Oh, you're welcome, Cheryl. You're very welcome. Yeah, it's always... It's always very useful. Um, Serum and skin feast on Billy Skin. Mm. Let me talk, yeah, let me um, have a chat outside this to you, Em. Um, I need to catch up with you anyway, um, because Billy is um, a little toddler. So yeah, let me have a separate a separate chat about that. Um, yeah, we need to catch up anyway about his skin, so we will do that. Um, okay. Right, well, I think if that's it, I am going to go. Um, thank you so much for being on. I really, really do appreciate your support and watching. It really means a lot. Um, it's yeah, it's just yeah, it's just lovely to have some people to talk to when I'm when I'm doing these. And perhaps I will look at doing slightly more interactive via Zoom another time, um, where we can perhaps share experiences. Um, and it's lovely to connect with other people. I think it just makes you feel less alone. Um, it makes you feel less alone. Yes, gut health is so interesting. So it's always, I think it's really nice to share tips around that with other people as well. Right, well, I am going to uh, love you and leave you. Um, thank you once again, and um, I will speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.